So today I will be trying something new. I'm going to attempt to film a get ready with me in my vlogmas filming location. This is literally just on the floor of my daughter's playroom. So we'll see how this goes. I have no plans of like talking about or linking any of the makeup I use because that's not really what this is about. This is just called keeping my hands busy. I haven't really filmed anything like this in a while and I've been seeing like a lot of people post their like kind of like 2023 wrap ups like kind of an arsenal of just kind of like how this past year went for them the good the bad the ugly you know all of that so I tried putting together a note on my phone just like kind of trying to think about like the year 2023 because it was a hard year but also like so many nice things happened this year so sometimes I feel like the bad really outshines all of like the good moments so sometimes I need to just like sit down and have a good think about what actually good happened throughout this year because like a perfect example is i did have a semi mental health crisis in february i had a real breakdown and it was right after scott and phoebe had been sick around my birthday time and i just i couldn't take it much more so i wound up calling my doctor and i went on lexapro i have been on anxiety medication in the past but i hadn't really been since i forget how many years ago it was maybe five plus years ago it really took this year to realizing like that my anxiety was not in a good place and my anxiety in life wasn't normal. I really came to terms understanding like I probably had postpartum anxiety and I just thought like what I was experiencing was like a normal first time mom experience. And I will say that being on Lexapro now, I really have been able to kind of come to terms with like, oh, I can do this, <laughs> this mom thing. It was my brain kind of telling me that I was doing everything wrong, not that I actually was doing everything wrong. You know, my sister-in-law had a baby this year and I watched her, I don't wanna say so confidently do things, but I watched her not worry about the things that I was so worried about. And it made me realize like the worrying I had about my baby wasn't normal. <laughs> You know, here I am nearly three years later and it's taken me this long to just realize like the way I was feeling when I first had a baby wasn't the way I should have been feeling. And like the things I do today as a mother, I wasn't doing a year ago because I just was so in my head about everything that actually like making the changes to go back on Lexapro allowed me to just be able to function as a normal human being and like it's okay, I can take my kid to an appointment and it's not gonna stress me out. I can take her to her first haircut and it's not gonna be like the world is ending, like everything is gonna be okay. A year ago, I wouldn't have been doing those things. So while something kind of not great happened at the beginning of the year, it wound up helping me in the long run. And this is something I've been thinking about a lot is that I feel like I spent 2023 focusing so much on fixing my mental state and I don't even think it's that fixed. I think I put some work into it. Definitely always can be improving upon it, but you know, baby steps have been made to do things for myself. I feel like I need to somehow take that energy and also put it into helping my physical self because that's something that I feel like, especially in the last, I wanna say six months has been not a priority for me. And I'll be the first to admit, I'm not the best when it comes to like going to get an annual examination or you know keeping up with like any kind of health thing for that matter. I think for me I'm such a routine person where if like something doesn't fit into a routine it's hard for me to stay on it and that's something that I don't know how to get into I guess you could say. I don't know if that makes any sense. I did want to give a Shout out to you guys as my subscribers. Um, it does mean a lot to me when you guys watch my videos. I mean, sometimes I make videos and I'm like, why am I even doing this? Who's gonna even wanna watch this? And then like when I see your comments and like I recognize your handles, it feels like friends like just chatting and checking in and it makes me happy. And it's like the reason I do this is I just love the connection between myself and my subscribers because like as somebody who subscribes to so many different YouTube channels, I, n I know what it feels like to be on the other end of it. So I don't know. I just, I wanna thank anyone who's stuck through this really difficult year of me barely posting and my half 
ass content, it feels like half the time. I just wanna thank you for sticking with me through 2023 and maybe we'll do something more in 2024. You know, something I did for myself, I think it was really hard for me to start doing things for myself and not feeling guilt about it. Like, and I still to this day do it. Yesterday I took a nap when I had the house to myself and I felt so guilty that I wasn't like maximizing my time. And it's so hard for me to even tell myself today that like, taking a rest is taking advantage of time and doing something important. So, you know, Scott has been a big reader the last few years and he's an audiobook guy, but I started getting into books again this year. I haven't fully read a book since I was in high school and I used to read books so religiously in high school. I was such a passionate reader back then. And then, you know, I went to college and things really went downhill for me when I went to college. What wound up happening was my mom finished a book and asked if I was interested in reading it. And that's kind of how I started getting back into reading. I read the book, but then like, I was like, I don't wanna deal with like buying books. That just, that wasn't an expense I wanted to deal with. You know, Scott had mentioned that he uses like the Libby app to borrow books. That's when he came up with the idea, like, let's get you a Kindle. And I was pretty much like, but I might not like it. Spoiler alert, I love my Kindle. At this point in the year, I'm on my 10th book. Now, I'm not a speed reader here, but considering I haven't finished books since I was in high school, the fact that I'm on my 10th book of 2023, that was not on my 2023 bingo card for me to even read one book. That is a really big accomplishment for me. It's something I'm really proud of, but it's also something that I look forward to at the end of the night. I look forward to going to bed maybe a little bit early so I can read a couple of pages of my book. And I usually try to pick books that will be meaningful and help me somehow. That has definitely been something important I've done for myself this year. And I look forward to next year trying to also find something else that I can add to my routine that will be meaningful to me. An idea I had had, and I don't know if this will really happen, but I was thinking crocheting. I've never tried crocheting, but it looks interesting to me. When I was a freshman in college, one of my friends taught me how to knit and I knit the world's shortest scarf. And I said I was never knitting again because I was so miserable during the process of learning to knit that scarf. However, I feel like I've heard better things about crocheting than knitting. So if you're somebody who does crocheting, like how do you get started? <laughs> do you have any tips? Like, cause I think that's what I want my 2024 thing to be. I, and that's what I'm thinking. Oh, that alarm is that I'm baking cookies. I'll be right back. I have to go get them out of the oven. <laughs> This is how crazy my life is. I'm literally baking cookies while I film. Okay. I feel like this year has also been really a weird year for social media. I feel like I try to distance myself from content that makes me unhappy while also trying to not distance myself from what's going on in the world. Because like, I feel like one of the advantages of social media is this isn't like the 1950s and we're not just getting the news that is chosen to be delivered to us. We're getting news delivered to us through like, you know, the source where the things are happening. And it can weigh heavily on me. Seeing children in pain and suffering and dying isn't something I want to see every single day. But I also fight with why should I block that from my feed when they can't block that from their life? So the last few months have been hard for that reason. There have been days where I take so much in and then I just have to close off the internet for a while because there's only so much I can take, but I also don't wanna pretend things aren't happening in the world. There's the other part of social media where I try to eliminate the type of content online that makes me feel not good enough. I don't follow accounts where they portray everything as like perfect and their house is always clean. I just don't understand really the point of accounts like that. Now, maybe there are people who get something out of those accounts, but I don't understand it. I don't want to follow people who make me feel bad about myself. Basically, I try to make a balance between avoiding content that makes me feel bad about myself, but also not sheltering me from the world and just being conscious of the amount that I take in. I feel like in the last year, I've followed a lot more, I don't know if humor is the right word, but a lot more accounts that just like make me laugh because what's the point of being here on this earth if we're not at least laughing at ourselves? Here's what I've learned. I have a nearly three-year-old 
my house is not gonna be clean again for a very long time. And if something is clean, something else is, a de is destroyed. And that's just the season of life I'm in right now. It doesn't mean I am failing, even though sometimes it surely feels like I'm failing. It doesn't mean that I'm not trying hard enough because I sure feel like I'm trying hard. I don't know, sometimes social media makes it hard to be a human being, I feel like. I really am trying to think if I had anything like that I got out of this year. I definitely feel like a lot of things this year have made me become extremely aware of like things that matter to me definitely don't matter to other people in my life and vice versa. There are people I know that want to portray, you know, perfection. And uh, I certainly hope that that's not what I'm portraying on this channel because <laughs> nothing, nothing perfect's going on over here. It's weird to me when people just put so much emphasis on perfectionism because I'd rather be happy and enjoy things than be perceived to be happy and enjoying things. I mean, this year didn't really make me happy for a lot of it. I really like working on YouTube. I really like doing this. And the last couple years have been so hard on me time-wise because I, I can't just make time happen. And my channel's been hit hard. And it mainly makes me sad because, you know, I put so many years of work into this channel just for like, it feels like failure a lot of the times. I try not to like consider myself a failure, but sometimes it's really <laughs> hard not to feel that way. What would I like for next year? That's a great question to ask myself. Besides learning crocheting, I'd like to make our house feel more like a home. I've talked to Scott about this before and we've had lots of like, I've had breakdowns about it, but we moved into this house and it wasn't supposed to be our forever home. But you know, where we live, a single family home is like three quarters of a million dollars. That seems like a lot of money just to upgrade to get an extra bedroom and a backyard. So, you know, I've been having these feelings of feeling trapped here. Is it more worth it to say, screw it, we're stuck here and put a lot of money into changing this house because I, I'm not happy with the house the way it is or keep trying to figure out a viable way to get out of this house. So, you know, those are questions that aren't really gonna have the right answer. And it's stuff that we talk about all the time. And that's definitely been heavy on me this past year, not knowing what the future holds as far as a living situation. You know, people ask all the time about like, when we're gonna send her to school and we have no clue. I mean, I started preschool at four. I think Scott started preschool at three. So, you know, starting preschool at three, I guess to be starting this fall. I have no idea. I really have no idea. And I feel like that's one of the most asked questions we get. And I feel like not having the answer makes me feel worse all the time because I'm like, you know, I'm her mom. I probably should have more of a plan, but I really don't. And I don't know how to know what the answer is, but I just don't. I hope that there was some sort of semblance of wording and making sense in this video. I feel like I just wrote a bunch of words down in a note and none of it really made sense. So I just kind of had to go with the flow. So let me know, how did 2023 go for you guys? Is there something that you're wanting to learn or wanting to try in the new year? I'm not really one for making resolutions, but I think having like, some sort of goal or aspiration for the new year is always exciting to try out. So let me know in the comments. As usual, thanks for stopping by my channel. If you're new here, click the subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications. I have my Instagram down below, give it a follow, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.